Hello, and welcome to Prairie Nerd Corner. My name is Brandon, and this is my attempt to beat Pokemon Ruby version using only Steven Stone's Pokemon. This is the second of my Masters 8 miniseries. If you haven't seen the other parts, the playlist is in the description down below. I'm going through each region and playing as each of the final eight trainers in the Pokemon World Coronation series. This should help us to see who has the best team based on how many attempts and deaths I have in each run. This time, we're heading into Hoenn to try out Steven's team. He's nominally a Steel-type trainer, but he has a few non-Steel Pokemon. Overall, his team composition is very interesting. I'm excited to see how this ragtag group of ancient and metallic Pokemon fare against a region that has too much water. Anyway, the rules are simple. I can only use Pokemon that Steven uses in the games. I've had to do some randomizing and a little bit of cheating to acquire some of them, but I trust that you won't mind too much for this challenge. The other standard hardcore Nuzlocke rules also apply. Any fan of Pokemon must be released immediately, no items in battle, battle mode must be kept on set, and no overleveling past the next gym leader's base. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. And without further ado, let's jump into Hoenn and see how Steven grew from a stone collector to a Pokemon champion. We introduce ourselves to Professor Birch as Steven. Then our journey begins, as all great journeys do, in the back of a moving truck. Let's jump to the good stuff. Choosing our starter, we leave Little Root Town and wait a minute, did I just run without my running shoes? It's all a conspiracy. Anyway, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Trico with Lyleep. Unfortunately, he only knows Astonish right now, so after hitting Poochiana in the face a bunch, I knock it out and save Professor Birch. As thanks, he lets me keep the Lyleep, which we name Malcolm. He then suggests we meet his daughter May. Sure, whatever floats your boat, dude. Meeting May, she challenges us to a battle with her Torchic. Malcolm still only knows Astonish, but Torchic doesn't resist it. Torchic is a lot stronger though, so it takes just as long to knock her out and win the battle. Now that we've finished that, we return to Little Root Town. Birch gives us the Pokedex, and Mom gives us our running shoes. Onward to adventure. In Pelleberg City, we run into Dad and meet a kid named Wally. Dad asks us to chaperone Wally as he goes to catch a Pokemon. But this is just a disguised catching tutorial, so let's skip it. Wally gets his starter Ralts and starts his own journey. Dad promises to challenge us later, after we have four badges. We move on to the woods on our way to Rustboro City. There, we catch Grant the Beldum. Steven's team wouldn't be complete without it, though it's not shiny like one of his anime counterparts. Leaving the woods, we find a kid eating watermelon who gives us the TM for Bullet Seed. This will be great for Malcolm, as he doesn't learn any grass moves by level up, so I teach it to him immediately. Time to put it to good use in our battle against Roxanne. She sends out Geodude and I choose Malcolm. Two hits from Bullet Seed, take it out immediately. Since this is Ruby, she only has her nose pass left, so that comes out next. She survives three hits from Bullet Seed, but then fails to hit a Rock Team. Roxanne tries to salvage the situation with a potion, but three hits and then a crit on Bullet Seed take down Roxanne without her dealing any damage. Malcolm just single-handedly won our first badge. Some minor plot happens with Team Magma and Mr. Briny, ending with us scoring a free boat ride to Doofer Town. I love a free boat ride, it takes me back to hanging out with my friends on the lake back in high school. When we reach land, we head to Granite Cave and add an Aeron named Lockwood to the team. And he has Rockhead, which should be a much more useful ability than Sturdy. We explore further into the cave and find Steven number 2. He gives us the TM for Steelwing and leaves. Given my matchup against Brawly, I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. Skip the Doofer Gym and head to Malville. We stop in Slateport to deal with some Team Magra nonsense. They take over the local museum and try to steal some Devon goods again. But Lockwood fins them off easily. Boss Maxi shows up, but leaves without brutally murdering us. Thanks for that. Heading north, our fake rival is waiting, so I level up Grant so that it evolves into Matang. Now that we have some power on the team, it's time to challenge May. May starts with Wilmer against Malcolm. She splashes around a bit while I take her down with Bullet Seed. Then Combuskin comes out. I switch for Lockwood while she focuses her energy. Confusion does massive damage, then Combuskin hits a critical hit with Blaze Boosted Ember, taking out Lockwood easily. Well, my team is doomed now, so it's time for attempt number two. The battle starts the same, with Wilmer doing nothing while Bullet Seed takes it out. Then Combuskin comes out, and I send in Grant. Confusion does a lot of damage, and Focus Energy lets Combuskin score another critical hit knocking Grant out again. <sighs> On to attempt number three. 
Skipping Wailmer, Combuskin goes for double kick when I switch Grant in. But she still scores a critical hit! What garbage. Blaze Boosted Ember would take me out, but I attack with Confusion anyway. Combuskin only uses Focus Energy, letting me take her out on the next turn with another Confusion. Last is Shroomish. Grant whittles her down a bit, but after getting paralyzed and hit with Leech Seed, I swap for Malcolm and finish the Shroom with a few hits of Acid. Take that however you will. With that unexpected challenge handled, we move on to Mallville City. Molly is waiting outside the gym, so he challenges us to a battle. Unfortunately, Grant takes down his Ralts with a single hit from Metal Claw. His uncle then invites us over as thanks for helping Wally catch a Pokemon. We now can challenge the Mallville City Gym, which is actually an impossible task I found. Between Parafusion, Magnet Pole, and insane damage from Sonic Boom and Shockwave, I couldn't beat Watson. I tried at level 18, the technical level cap since I haven't beaten Brawly. I tried at level 23, the level cap for Watson, and nothing worked. Magnemite kept hitting through reduced accuracy, and Lockwood couldn't take a hit from any of Voltorb or Magneton's electric attacks. Malcolm is basically useless. Yeah, he resists electric attacks, but his damage output is absolute garbage. And Grant's best damaging move is Rock Smash, which has 20 base power. So that's it. Steven could not beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Ruby. The gym types just aren't doing him any favors given the level caps that we have. Also, his move pool is pretty limited here in Generation 3. But I'm not giving up. Let's restart the run and try something new. While I'm doing that, why don't you make sure you're subscribed? Several of you have asked to see failed attempts, so this is me doing just that. I restart the game and pick Mudkip as a starter. Steven does borrow one in the manga, so it kind of counts. It's a stretch, but it's something. I won't get both Cradley and Armaldo, but that's a problem for future Brandon. Let's skip to the first gym battle. Unsurprisingly, Roxanne doesn't stand a chance against the Mudkip. Water Gun destroys Geodude. The Nose Pass takes a few turns because Roxanne tries stalling with some potions. But eventually, Malcolm wins after only taking a single hit. On our way to the next gym, we have some team changes. Malcolm evolves into Marsh Tomp, and I catch Grant the Beldum and Grady the Aeron. Now for Brawly. He sends out Machop, and I choose Malcolm. Bulk Up threatens some heavy damage, but Machop only uses Seismic Toss. Meanwhile, Malcolm uses two Mud Shots and a Water Gun to knock it out. Then comes Makuhita. Mud Shot does great damage, but Bulk Up means it won't be a knockout. So I switch to Water Gun, prompting a Super Potion. Malcolm then takes a ton of damage from Arms Thrust before an Orenberry heals him a little bit. Luckily, this puts us in Torrent range, boosting Water Gun enough to take out Brawly and win the battle. And just like that, we are farther in this run than the previous attempt. Let's go to Watson. Once again, Malcolm is the star of the show. Mudshot takes down Magnemite before it can hit me. Then Voltorb explodes in Malcolm's face, bringing in Magneton. They manage to hit a Sonic Boom, leaving us with 8 HP, but another Mudshot finishes the Magnet Pokemon and the battle. Now for some actual progress. On Route 113, we catch our second official slash legit Pokemon, Skarmory. Or rather, we try to catch her, she just keeps popping out of every ball I throw. Until finally, she stays in. That was close. I call her Watts and give her the experience share. We move on to Meteor Falls, where Team Magma is mugging Professor Cosmo for a meteorite. They run off to Mount Pyre to make the volcano explode, so I guess we'll follow to stop them, as a 10 year old should. We challenge Maxi at the crater of an active volcano. Round 1 is his Mydiana against Grant. Maxi switches out for his camera up, so I switch for Malcolm. Water Gun does massive damage. Maxi tries to prolong the fight with the Super Potion, but it's not even enough to save Camrup from the next splash of water. Mydiana comes back in and intimidates Malcolm. I alternate between covering him in water and mud, eventually defeating the dog by covering him in mud, probably causing a heat stroke next to this volcano. Maxi's final Pokemon is a Golbat, so I send out Grant. Golbat manages to flinch Grant not once, not twice, but three times in a row. What garbage. I then swap for Grady. 
Grady gets an attack boost from Metal Claw before hitting himself in confusion, flinching, and nearly dying to another bite. So of course I have to switch again, this time to Watts. She proves that she's the most badass new character by immediately scoring a critical hit on Swift to win the battle. Maxi leaves, Archie thanks us for helping, and we head to Lava Ridge to acquire our new badge. Flannery starts the battle with a Slugma. I once again use Malcolm. A single mud shot easily defeats the Magma Slug. Flannery sends out a second one, but let's just skip to her ace Torkoal. Mudshot does a big chunk of damage, but then Torkoal immediately retaliates with a critical hit body slam. Which sucks. He then survives a second mud shot before immolating Malcolm with a powerful overheat. No more relying on him for future gym battles. I send out Grady as our two other team members are both weak to fire. Flannery uses the Hyper Potion to undo all our work so far. And to make things worse, Torkoal doesn't even lose any accuracy or speed because of its white smoke ability. I switched to using Headbutt and managed to deal decent damage before Torkoal melts Grady with a couple more overheats. I send out Grant next as they pack the most punch. Grant whittles Torkoal down to the red and even confuses her. But Flannery has a second Hyper Potion to undo all our work again. Frick. Torkoal then paralyzes Grant with Body Slam before finishing them off with her last overheat. Now it's just Watts versus this monster. Another Body Slam paralyzes Watts as well. She and Torkoal trade hits for several turns, during which Watts is hit by a critical hit and immobilized by paralysis two turns in a row. But she still manages to pull through knocking out Torkoal with only 11 hit points left. Well, that was a train wreck. I could restart the run, but let's see how far I can go with Watts. Fortunately, I have my last two encounters right now. Woo the Baltoy from Route 111 and Sattler the Lyleep from Reviving a Fossil. If I can survive against Norman, maybe I'll allow myself to catch a Danareth. But in the meantime, we grind. Time to challenge Norman. My plan involves a lot of cheese, so let's see how it goes. Battle starts with Slacking versus Watts. Watts uses Toxic to badly poison Slacking before falling asleep. And now the stall begins. Basically, my plan is to stall with Double Team while Toxic slowly defeats Norman's Pokemon. Slacking falls to Red Health, so Norman uses a Hyper Potion. But that only means that the poison is stronger. By the time the Ape dies, I have four Double Teams set up. From that victory, Watts also levels up and learns Steel Wing. Norman's second Pokemon is just another Slacking. So let's skip that. His final Pokemon is Vigoroth, which makes for a very lame team. Once again, I badly poison Vigoroth. This could easily backfire because of Facade, but it's a chance I have to take. This stupid ape traps me into using Toxic with Encore, then manages to hit literally every attack, despite all my double teams. But this just means that the poison has enough time to defeat Vigoroth, without Watts even having to hit him. And that's five badges. Now we also have the ability to surf. Unfortunately, we're very close to the next level cap, so let's hurry to Fortree City. Along the way, we kick Team Magma out of the Weather Institute and kick May's butt again. We also find Steven again, who gives us the Devon Scope so we can get rid of any Kecleon on our way. Now we head to the gym. Winona sends out Swallow to face Watts first. And naturally, I brought all the cheese. Watts uses Toxic to badly poison Swallow after four misses due to double team spamming. But then I return the favor. I know she has Aerial Ace on all of her Pokemon, but this will help me avoid other moves that would do more damage, namely from Pelipper. After some stalling, I chance an attack and manage not only to hit, but also to score a critical hit. This brings in Pelipper, so the cheese begins anew. I can use Toxic to weaken Pelipper, Double Team to avoid damage, Rest to heal if need damage done to me, and Air Cutter to deal more damage. Winona does heal with the Hyper Potion, but that just makes Pelipper suffer more before fainting a few turns later. Next is a Skarmory Mirror match, but I have better stalling potential. We trade Air Cutters and Aerial Aces for several turns. I sped up my emulator while playing this section, but I'll just crossfade to the end of the battle. Winona's final Pokemon is her Altaria, but you know the drill. I only have a few more Air Cutters, but I'm not worried. Watts poisons the dragon, rests to heal herself, and then finishes the battle with another critical hit. Malcolm carried for the first half of this run, but Watts has definitely filled those shoes. 
With two decisive gym battles under our belt, I decided to use some game chart codes to catch an Anorith. We name him Dodgson and add him to the team. Wu also evolves into Claydol on the way to Lily Cove City. In Lily Cove, we run into May for our last battle. Again, it's not very eventful, so let's skip it and move on. However, Sattler does evolve into Cradley shortly after the battle, which is dope. Then, a bunch of plot happens. Maxi's on Mount Pyre, Team Magma is in Slateport City, Team Magma is in Lily Cove City, and Maxi's escaping under the ocean. But with that nonsense done, we head to Moss Deep City for our next gym. Also while grinding, Dodgson evolves into Armaldo. Finally, we have a sturdy team. The battle against Tate and Liza is a bit underwhelming in Ruby and Sapphire, because they just have a Lunatone on a Soul Rock. I counter with Watts and Sattler. Knowing that Soul Rock has dangerous type coverage, I double up on attacking them, knocking them out with a Steel Wing Giga Drain combo. And now it's a 2v1. I try to repeat the maneuver against Lunatone, but they manage to survive Giga Drain by using Light Screen. But surprise surprise, Watts finishes a second gym battle with a critical hit, so that's 7 badges which is way more than I expected after that Flannery fiasco. I also didn't realize that the level cap only goes up by one for Wallace, but I should be fine. Time to explore underwater in search of Team Magma. Deep in the seafloor cavern, we find Groudon and Maxi. Maxi wants to fight again, but it's not that much of a challenge. Watts handles Mydiana pretty easily, especially with a few swagger boosts. Then, Wu stalls Camrept until it faints before defeating Crobat swiftly. Now for even more plot. Groudon causes global warming, so we head to Sutopolis to stop it. If only global warming was actually this easy to stop. Obviously, we have to talk to Stall this Groudon. Fortunately, Groudon doesn't use Fire Blast on their first turn, so we get to hit with Toxic. I then switch to Sattler and use Giga Drain to defeat the Behemoth a few turns later. With the world saved, we can resume our Pokemon journey and battle Wallace for our final badge. Wallace's first Pokemon is Love Disk, which is so bad that we're just going to skip her entirely. Wallace's second Pokemon is Whizcash. We both set up on the first turn. Watts then hits a solid air cutter while Whizcash makes it rain. I then poison the catfish before he hits with Water Pulse through my double teams, killing Watts and ending her reign of terror. Distraught, I send out Sattler. I set up an Amnesia to be ready for all the Water Pulses. Sattler barely survives a second earthquake before healing a bit with Giga Drain, knocking out the murderous fish. Wallace chooses Celio next, and I stay in to continue healing Sattler. Aurora Beam does minimal damage, allowing Sattler to finish the Walrus Pokemon on the next turn and heal a bit more. Next is the real nightmare, Milotic. Ice Beam does a lot of damage while Sattler confuses Milotic. Giga Drain deals right around 50% of his health, and heals just enough to survive a non-crit. I don't have any other choices, so I go for another attack. Milotic hits himself in confusion, but then he barely manages to survive another Giga Drain, thanks to, I guess, a low roll on damage. Wallace heals his Pokemon with a Hydro Potion, which is bad. Our Pokemon exchange even more hits, with Milotic falling again to like 1 HP. Sattler survives another Ice Beam on 38 HP before taking out Milotic with Acid. Wallace then brings out his final Pokemon, Seeking. He does no damage with Water Pulse, but I'm out of Giga Drains. Once again, I don't have any other options, so I use a combination of Confuse Ray and Acid to whittle down Seeking. Sattler falls to 12 HP before knocking out the Seeking, earning us our final badge. But that leaves us just three Pokemon. With eight badges in our possession, we head to Evergrande City to traverse Victory Road. The journey's not bad, though it does end with a battle with our rival, Wally. Wally has a pretty cool team, but I have Wu the Claydol. Their first Ancient Power gives an Omni Boost, which allows him to take down most of Wally's team single-handedly. Altaria falls to a few hits, Psybeam destroys Roselia, Delcaddy's never an issue, and Magneton falls to a bunch of dirt that Wu found on the ground. Gardevoir starts to set up with Double Team and Calm Mind, so I switch to Dodgson to hit him hard with the power of friendship. Dodgson nearly dies to a boosted Psychic. But apparently he's unstoppable, so hopefully that will continue into the league. We finish preparing for the league and enter to challenge the Elite Four. Sydney is a master of dark types, so I don't expect much trouble. He leads with Mydiana, and I start with Dodgson, obviously. I use Ancient Power and Metal Claw, hoping to get some boosts to counter Intimidate. But that doesn't work. 
Brick Break does defeat my Diana, but next is Sharpedo, who immediately drowns Wu with Surf. I bring out Sattler, who avenges her fossil bro with Giga Drain. Sydney chooses Cacturd next. Sattler hits a Sludge Bomb, barely missing the kill. But then she gets the poison! Cacturn falls to poison damage, bringing out Absol. Absol threatens to hurt me with Swords Dance, but Sattler is able to take him down with a combination of Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, and an unnecessary crit. Dodgson's final Pokemon is Shiftry, who crits with Fake Out on entry. Not cool, dude. He then tries to stall with Double Team and Full Restores as Sattler launches Noxious Bombs at him, poisoning him in the process. Sattler also manages to score a critical hit with Rock Tomb before taking the Shiftry out with another Sludge Bomb. One down, four to go. Let's see how far we can go with just two Pokemon. Phoebe is next with her Ghost Pokemon. First is a Dusclops. Wu hits Shadow Ball, doing less damage than I would like. Meanwhile, Dusclop crits on Shadow Punch, then takes Wu to 19 health before healing. This isn't good. A third punch knocks out Wu, leaving me with Sattler, whom I forgot to heal after the Sydney fight because I'm an idiot. What in the world? On to attempt two against Phoebe. I choose to hit with Earthquake first, dealing more damage than Shadow Ball, I think. But then Dusclop uses Curse, which it survives on one HP. I switch to Sattler, knowing that I'm doomed, but I'm gonna go down swinging. Phoebe heals, and I hurl some rocks. Dusclops uses Curse again, but I stay in to finish her off, only for Phoebe to send out a second one. I switch for Wu, who gets confused. I go for Shadow Ball and get the defense drop, but Dusclops gets the exact same thing. I hit an Earthquake through confusion, but Dusclops survives and hits another Shadow Ball. This kills Wu, so I'm down to just Sattler. Sattler takes out the ghost a few turns later with half her HP remaining. Bayonet comes out and drops my power points, which sucks. She then starts hitting shadow balls while a combination of direct and residual damage takes her out. Fourth is Sable alive, but I have 12 HP, 3 power points left, and no way to heal. I hit a weak sledge bomb before Sable Eye retaliates with Faint Attack, defeating Sattler and ending the run. And that's it. I could not beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Ruby with only Steven Stone's Pokemon. His team as a champion is great. High levels, crazy stat totals, great TM moves. But they're terrible for early and mid game. Beldum starts with literally only takedown. You can't technically acquire two of his Pokemon until at least the post game. And most of them don't even evolve until after the fifth gym's level cap. Don't get me wrong. I love Steven's Pokemon, but they are so hard to use. The first half of this attempt was just the Mudkip show. Skarmory did pretty well with Toxic stalling Norman and Winona, and by Tate and Liza, everyone was fully evolved. But after that, it was hell. When I first typed this, the Masters 8 battle between Ash and Steven was still a week away, so I hoped that that battle was more amazing and epic than this challenge was. Spoilers, I don't think it was. Still, I had a lot of fun, and I enjoyed both having to restart completely and moving on despite a couple near wipes. I think both of those made me a better Nuzlocker. Maybe I'll retry this run later in Omega Ruby. Let me know if you would want to see that. Also, what was your favorite part of this challenge? And how would you change Steven's team to make it a bit more usable in-game? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, feel free to leave any challenge ideas you would like to see. But that's going to be it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. Oh, and check out my Twitter, my Twitch, and my Discord. All those links are in the description down below. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Remember to be kind and come back for the next one. Later, nerds.